un petit chemin de terre pour ce nouveau portrait sous la pluie. Je vous embarque avec moi à la rencontre de Peter et Marie qui vivent en mini maison depuis trois ans au Danemark. Uh, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for your welcoming. Marie and this is my husband Peter and we're currently in our tiny house we built ourselves so everything is custom made for us we're sitting in Denmark in the actually the middle part of Denmark where we are on a ground that we own a bit of a farmland 1.5 hectare land where we do permaculture gardening and rental and all sorts of things we lived in small student apartments in Copenhagen the, the capital of Denmark. Also had some friends that had a small garden area near Copenhagen where we also stayed and, and took care of the garden and the house and it was exactly the same size as this tiny house also mm. but that was fine for us so we had the opportunity of testing out this right size for us and uh, what we needed and um, a tiny mm. house seemed pretty perfect in that sense yeah so we had the idea of uh, we would like to live in a tiny house sometime but if it's not Sort of, if we were to buy a normal sized house now, would we ever be able to go tiny afterwards? And we, we wouldn't be able to do that. So it was sort of now or never. So we started thinking about living in a tiny house that must be two or three years before we built it. Before we started, yeah. Yeah, started building it. And at that point, we were actually pretty. We did a lot of research at that mm. point, but we're not sure if we wanted to buy one or we wanted to build one. So you wanted to buy one because that is financially more, that makes more sense. Like we did the numbers and that makes sense. And then we met somebody else who made their own with mm. no experience. We were like, we really want to do that. And I really want to mm. build the house ourselves because there's so much empowering and saying I can grow my own food and I can make sure that I have clean water and a place to stay, like the essentials of life. It's so important for me that, but we didn't know anything about it. We just like, let's just do it. Mm. And we were, if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. And we have still some money left to find somewhere to live, but we then have the experience. So we wanted to have a house that was perfectly suited for us. Um, we want the experience and we want the tools to could that we could use the rest of our lives mm. so so there were many layers in that and the motivation was um, freedom was the main thing for both of us but for me it was also the climate change and having less of a footprint and for you it was the financial Such. side as well mm. the, that freedom yeah which goes well together sort of having low expenses and therefore not needing a higher as high as in, an income to be totally safe and fine and then having the goal of using the extra money we actually earn if it's not going towards the plot of land or the big permaculture garden project then investing it so in time it can sort of take care of itself your income luckily they fit quite well the two aspects yeah they do yeah <laughs> otherwise that would have been problematic yeah <laughs> it started off by studying sports actually at university and also a bit of biology so it was this combination that sort of uh, started the interest of sort of active nature outdoor sports but sort of focusing on nature and sports you sort of have to have the value that the sport that i do uh, kite surfing it costs quite a bit to get all the equipment so you have to take care of it so the, sort of that's the one thing you do and you focus on that so minimalism has always been a way of maybe being able to do a more expensive sport without having all the money as a student. So uh, 
that has sort of slowly led to a, a path thinking, how can you live in a way where you can keep do, on doing this sport or other types of sports or having the time to be outside and uh, teach outdoor uh, sports? My story begins when I'm small. I lived, my dad was a principal at a school. Um, but we lived in the woods, so I've always been outside and my both my mom and dad uh, have studied biology. But my whole childhood and my whole teenage year, everything in my start 20s, everything was about theatre. And I took, uh, I went to the university studying theatre, I took a, a master's degree in theatre. And then I found out at some point what a, I'm not going to say that nicely. What a shithole we are in, climate-wise, and it scared me a lot. So I went that direction, and then I found permaculture. And permaculture was a really big thing for me, because it was like the answers of uh, not everything, but it has the answers. Since then, I have been teaching permaculture at um, schools for young people, age 20, 25 ish that age uh, within a gap year or in between years in university is called like a passion school in Denmark. location to build we had someone we could ask as a consultant and then it was actually asking him what is the first step and that was finding a trailer and uh, after we did that I mean it was just every time what's the next step what's the next step so we never knew what we were gonna build in seven days we only knew what we were gonna build the next three days so uh, in that way it was stressful but also quite nice because you didn't have to think about the roof when we are building the floor we couldn't have find a lot of people that could explain us what to do or what there were no YouTube channels or there weren't at that mm. time there weren't that much information to get so it's like we just did things we just things that make sense and we just had to yeah and if we found a video it was maybe in America which we couldn't we had to change the climate for our place and stuff so and for our location so there wasn't any yeah. sort of Danish, there Danish people things, we could yeah. ask Properly, so uh, yeah. it was good we had our consultant we could call and help, yeah, could yeah. help from. So when we started, we actually had a budget we set out to go for. It was 150,000 Danish kroner, and we ended up spending almost exactly that amount. So I think whatever budget you have, uh, you actually end up with. We had this amount on a, on a bank, or in a bank account when we started, and uh, luckily it didn't go crazy, uh, <laughs> the budget or anything. So that worked out quite well. Our tiny house is on a, uh, it's actually a, what you call it, a trailer made for boats, uh, which weighed over 10 tons. So we. Uh, cut off the support beams for the uh, for the sailing boat and then we had a new platform we could build the tiny house on. So we started the build in 2019 the first of November and we finished roughly well it was it was ready enough to move in five and a half months after so it uh, all the interior wasn't sort of finished but it, we were able to move into it and live in it and sleep in it so uh, and then maybe it took another half a year to get all the details and all the nice things up on the shelves and stuff so yeah five and a half months for the main part and then uh, another half year to get the nice details done yeah the whole floor is second hand uh, the framework for the floor is also the sort of the frame wood is also second hand and uh, the windows you can see here, we wrote to a company and asked them, do you have any windows that are, have any scratches or things you can't use anymore? And they sent us a list with 20 windows and seven of these windows are from that company because there's a small scratch or they had one left over from a project. So we got a really good price. I mean, this window by itself cost maybe 20,000 and we got all windows plus the door for 20,000. So it's uh, just one email saved us maybe 
40,000 Danish kroner. So there are a lot of sort of tips and tricks uh, we tried to do now that we couldn't get materials, sort of collect materials. There was no planning before day one. <laughs> we just knew we wanted it to be on wheels. We wanted it to have a nice uh, lounge area. I wanted a lot of big windows and Marie wanted to be sort of cave-like and we wanted a sleeping loft. That was like the beginning at day one. Uh, otherwise, no plan. Our rainwater system is a uh, the gutters that put it into a half a barrel here and on the other side there's a full-size barrel and at the moment we only use it, use it for watering plants but previously we had a water tank on the north side that was actually for drinking so keeping it nice and clean if you look currently here it's from a building festival where they had uh, where they used these colorful uh, pieces ah. of wood for uh, the menus and the drinks and stuff. So we reused those and uh, quite fun. Uh, a, a good effect for the house. So it's a, a second hand feature. <laughs> tiny house has the inner wall which is made of clay clay walls and uh, the goal with a clay wall is to the sun that comes in from the south in this direction can uh, heat up the walls and also on the right hand side there's a fireplace again being installed in uh, next week but uh, we used it previous uh, the previous years uh, so the fireplace heats up the clay walls and the heat is actually preserved there until the colder evenings where it slowly can come out again or during the night so it's a uh, clay walls is a good way of you know holding the heat inside the house the wooden inner loft or if you call it that it's um very simple actually the cheapest wood you can get it's just normal planks of wood and um yeah we wanted to have a nice effect instead of having a tiny house where it was a box a simple box we wanted to be a bit more interesting so that's why we had this uh, triangular shape to make it a bit more cozy and a bit more interesting in a in a tiny house build there are so many different types of materials you can use so we've tried to keep it as simple as possible um, and what of course we thought was nicest but we tried to keep it quite natural with the like sort of the table uh, holders here and the shelves to sort of keep it in the same simple design as a uh, so instead of buying IKEA wooden holders for shelves, then you make your own out of pieces of wood. And uh, you could also get a door frame. You could have bought a door frame, but we built one ourselves to make it nice and interesting. This was an old top of a Christmas tree, which we've carved out. So this is actually the top of a Christmas tree, which we've uh, made to a cutlery holder. <laughs> we made the sofa, so there's a, a storage space under the sofa. And you can lift them up and then uh, there's loads of room down there. It's not filled, filled up at all, but uh, we're glad we did that. So we can move the things, open it up, but then we have loads of different, loads of space to leave our stuff in there. And uh, also we have down in the bottom here, we actually have a basement where um, if you fold down the table here, we can grab the two handles, lift up, and there's, a, there's actually two meters down there. We can lie two people down there uh, next to each other. So at the moment we have a box full of 
a few boxes with things, but otherwise it's a basement to be able to, uh, yeah, store stuff. It's just for store, storage? For storage, yeah. Uh, the, when we were building, we called it the wine cellar, so we could fill it up with wine, but uh, it's not insulated in any way, so it would, it would freeze if, uh, if it was there all, <laughs> all winter. We also have storage in. Um, it's actually three different types of shelves or cupboards, which is a... Uh, that took a long time, but it, we managed to get it to work. <laughs> we have our small fridge here, which uh, fits perfectly in this slot. And uh, very important for us that it was up in the height because uh, We've tried having to open fridges down low and it's, it's not good for the back in, in time. So it's uh, perfect having it at this height. In here we have a bit of food and dry food and uh, things for making our meals. And then down here we have our, a bit of our clothes. Uh, I mean these, these drawers they go very far back so it's a huge drawer that comes all the way back here. So this is our uh, walk-in closet at the end of the house where we have uh, all of my shirts and a few dresses here, Marie's, and shoes down at the bottom with a shelf up here. And uh, otherwise we have our washing bags ready for uh, 40 and 60 degrees. We have a small window and then we other have shelves on the other side with our clothes. So it's uh, a tiny house with a walk-in closet and uh, the bathroom is uh, outside, yeah. have the heating the water heater down at the bottom because we never go down there but it's uh, as you can see the roof is a different style into the triangular roof uh, before to make it uh, feel like a different room so when you're up here it actually feels like I mean you're blocked off from the rest of the house which was a good uh, way of doing it we've left the clay walls unpainted so uh, this is being painted white of course but this is the natural color of the clay walls so that uh, it's as dark as possible out there when we sleep. At the moment we're connected so uh, the water from these taps is water that's you know connected from the actual system. So we are on grid at the moment and uh, we have 230 volts in Denmark is uh, a normal plug and a normal oven. So this is a, a simple oven where we can uh, cook with two plates on top. And uh, of course they all use 230 volts, but then we also have a 12 volt system, which is a, a very low usage system. So all the lights are at 12 volts and give just as, as much light as uh, other normal lights, but have a lower usage. But we've also ha actually put a mechanism in here, the V and the O here. So these are the high usage um, machines. So the oven here uses a lot of electricity when it's used. Uh, compared to the whole system but um, we have the hot water heater which is up in the sleeping loft and then we have the oven we can either use the oven which is the O we click it over then the uh, hot water heater turns off and the other way around we can turn, uh, turn the oven off and then heat the water we can't boil water use the oven heat water and all kinds of things so you, you some people might forget they have everything turned on and yeah use way too much energy, but we have an automatic system where it gives us a natural max limit. We wanted to have a fireplace and this is the spot for the fireplace over here. Um, <laughs> at the moment where all of our cables are and things, <laughs> but uh, the fireplace is here where we can see glass from three sides. And uh, for such a small room as a tiny house actually is, it's literally two pieces of wood in the morning and two in the evening. That's enough uh, for minus degrees outside. So it's um, impressive when you have, uh, yeah, 20 centimeters of insulation in the walls. You have good windows. Um, it doesn't take much to heat up. And again, if the sun comes in, it's uh, even less. Um, so we next week we're installing the fireplace again. And of course we have the forest outside, which will... Uh, make sure we've cut enough wood up for the next year so it's uh, dry and ready for next year so um yeah
finish the tiny house build at the building location where we uh, moved it 20 minutes away by car and we lived there for about six six or eight months mm -hmm. while uh, Marie had an internship and then we uh, because we could move the house we could actually say yes to a job that was two and a half hours away in the northwest coast of Denmark so we lived up there for two years at our own location up there we got to a point where we we needed somewhere more permanent tiny house living is nice but when you can move around all the time you never quite feel like the right or the the, the spot you're at is home when you start a place where you plant trees and shrubs and bushes and and edible things you like to stay there because it will it would give you fruit in like five years and nuts in ten years. It doesn't mm. make sense just putting a lot of money in the ground and then moving. So we needed to have a space of our own. And I thought we came to a place where we were a bit tired of, of traveling the world. We still love that. But the, we, had, we had a feeling of life could go a bit slower. And we like nesting somewhere. Just there. It's an expensive one? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, incredible. <laughs> and you can recognize it because there's white nets netting up at the top here. So you can sort of see there's a small white mm. net. Oh, that's a good weight. <laughs> we wanted to wear a place where we can start our own businesses. We want to have multiple incomes, um, like renting out, selling uh, different kind of things that we make ourselves. We want to be uh, self-sufficient, uh, not wholly self-sufficient. That's going a long way. That's really difficult in this society we have now. So we want to. Um, could grow all our food, all our greens and vegetables, nuts, fruits, berries. Going out, collecting our own mushrooms uh, on our plots of land and nearby is something we have found quite interesting now. And we're glad we, <laughs> we actually have mushrooms so close now that we've only lived here for a few months. <laughs> Also being able to take care of ourselves in other ways, so taking care of a bee family, multiplying that next year, seeing if we can get more bee families, um, and harvesting honey, and again part of the whole system when people come and maybe take a course here in three, in two or three years, then they'll be able to buy honey while they're here. This side of the forest to the, to the right is going to be loads of fruit trees to the right side and then the, the side on the left here is actually where the forest garden is going to be and um, yeah it's going to be made uh, sort of yeah based on the permaculture principles where it's a no dig garden so you don't turn any, any sort of yeah you don't dig and flip the soil because then you destroy all the micro, micro uh, organisms so it's it's a uh, it's the easy way of a lazy man's uh, garden, uh, where you actually put compost on top. And uh, we started clearing some trees here and then start planting next spring. The first year you observe a garden, see how it is during a lot of rain or winter or different climates uh, or different weather types. And then uh, the year after, you can start making a big design or plan. And then you actually, I mean, it's a garden that's meant to be permanent and perennial um, for 5, 10, 20, 30 years. Maybe in time, the goal is to be able to do courses here. So uh, have one of the uh, coolest gardens, forest gardens in Denmark. So people would come and uh, want to learn about forest gardening.
Yeah, the rules for tiny houses are, is very, it's a tricky subject and very difficult. And Denmark is one of the strictest countries when it comes to tiny house regulations. At the moment, it's tricky to be able to live in a tiny house. Um, and people are working out different ways of, there are different sort of eco communities where it's possible that you can, um, some summer house regulations, you can some work with that. It's an area that's a lot has happened in the last two years and three years, so it's it's actually going in the right direction. And we want to be a positive things for ourselves and people around us and for the whole world. So we want to do our part in saving the world and doing it in a kind of peaceful inspirational yeah, way inspirational. yeah instead of Be an example yeah we didn't we did the the whole activism standing yelling being angry and it's so tiresome and there's so much respect for people doing that mm. but it takes so much energy and we wanted to do it in a peaceful way mm. and a way that were that were in a another kind of energy but you have to remember there's actually a solution to everything so if you keep your mind on those things and use your energy on that and what you can do and, and all the practical things, then I think it's actually going to be more exciting instead of depressing. before there was also a tree like this so they learned how to climb <laughs> she always ran up and down <laughs> she probably likes that